for many decades, he worked for post office. He even worked at a crown office. There's not a single day in a year where this issue does not go away. Varche's father, Vipin, lost his livelihood to the post office scandal, called the most widespread miscarriage of justice in British legal history. Over 700 postmasters were wrongfully prosecuted for theft, fraud and false accounting, then forced to pay thousands of pounds they did not have. Postmasters were imprisoned, financially ruined and some took their own lives. Today it has been revealed that the post office told its investigators to racially classify suspects and even included use of a racial slur. Last month, the public inquiry heard how Asian postmasters were mistrusted by telephone support staff. When postmasters called to raise concerns about missing money, South Asian callers were mocked and derided as another scamming Patel. I always wondered if post office was racist, and now it's clear, post office was racist. The company has acknowledged its wrongdoing. Post office does not tolerate racism in any shape or form. The language used in this historic document is completely abhorrent and condemned by today's post office. The wrongful prosecution had a huge knock-on effect on my father's physical and mental well-being. My father is disabled. He walks with crutches. For the first few years, more or less, he was well, bedridden. That was the impact of Vipin's conviction. This is a story of how technology failures led to injustice. The post office's accounting software, supplied by the multinational Fujitsu, was responsible for missing money that was blamed on postmasters. The Patels, like hundreds of families, have since been vindicated, but remain severely out of pocket. I've been angry, I've been um, horrified that the fact that there was racism and also the fact that post office have not compensated my father. The Patels are still waiting for a satisfactory compensation offer. Although the public inquiry into the failings continues, today's revelations add further distrust and discontentment towards the historic British institution. Simeon Brown reporting. Well, earlier I spoke to former postmaster Seema Misra. She was pregnant with her second child when she was convicted of theft and sent to jail in 2010. The conviction was quashed in 2021. I asked her what she thought about the post office logging people's ethnicity in this way. To be the my first reaction was when I, when I read the news was like, you know, if it might be if I wouldn't been Indian, I wouldn't be suspended. I wouldn't, might have not even sent to prison if I was an Indian. That was my first reaction was. Oh, you went to jail as a pregnant woman. You were described yeah. in the press as a pregnant thief. Can the post office True. ever atone for what happened to you? Never did. Never did. I, I don't like, you know, they, they feel like to me they're like, a, they have, they are like a dictatorship. It's not democracy, it's a dictatorship. That's what it feels like it. Why do you say that? Because they keep on doing like abusive process, like during my trial, every time, like every abusive process. Then again, there's a, another news come out, another abusive process. Nothing, it's just nothing like, Nobody, like, want ready to get it sorted. They're just like covering up, covering up, covering up. So that's why, you know, when the news comes up, like, it, it is shocking, but not surprising. So every time, like, a, every time we go to court, there's something new comes up, like uh, clerk advice, shredding of document, racism. So everything, something new comes up. You're scared, like, to be honest, mentally tired. What next? For those people who don't know, the extent of your story. Give us a sense of, of what it was like for you at the very worst. They made me feel I'm the dumbest person. They, when the, it was all going through, they said to me, Mrs. Mishra, we have so many post office, they're doing fine. It's just your post office you're having issue with. And no support from them at all. I've been struggling and struggling, struggling, fighting, and all those things. It's just like, they, as I mentioned, they're like a mafia. They're like a mafia, that they're above everybody. They can do whatever they want to do. The, the, I don't know, when the auditor came in, they gave me warning. You know, anytime you were 500, they're like a big, I'm tall, but like they're like a very tall, look down on you. They are mafia. I was so scared of my life and my family life. They can do anything. And, I mean, you went to jail alongside many other postmasters. Many people have lost their lives without getting justice. Some people took their own lives. 
I mean, give us a sense of the enormity of what has happened here for people like you. Do you know, like, as I mentioned, I would have been the... So many people committed suicide. I would have been the, one of them if I wouldn't been pregnant. And we, we, and we know 62 people died. I won't say 62 people died. Post office murdered them. Post office killed them. I mean, obviously... So many the, people died before getting any justice. Obviously, the post office um, would deny that fervently, I'm sure, but they have constantly said over the last couple of years since this scandal has been exposed that they understand the enormous human impact and that they will make sure that everyone gets full and fair compensation. Do you, do you believe they do understand the impact? No, not at all. They don't understand. They don't understand at all what, what we go through. They, they say these things, they say these things, but when it's all done, then we will believe, like, it, it is done. Till then, it's just all in the air. What is your life like now? When you um, had your conviction quashed outside the court, you said you were looking forward to life changing, to no longer having to declare that you had a conviction, to life, in a sense, going back to normal. But has your life ever really gone back to normal? Nothing. Only things change because I don't have to take my conviction anymore that I'm a convicted criminal. Other than that, it's still the same. Like, you know, somebody asked me, how are you going to feel? I said, only time will tell. I would definitely want to forget everything and move on, but only time will tell. Seema Misra, thank you very much for talking to us today. Thank you.